Hey everyone, welcome to this fourth video in the ongoing tutorial related to introducing Java programming and development. Previously, I discussed the various operators and symbols used for things like arithmetic, assignment, comparison, and logical evaluation. And so today I'm going to begin with a brief discussion on arrays, and then we'll begin creating some of them in our code. And along the way, we might dive into a quick discussion about member access controls, which just pertain to words like public, private, and static. And by no means will this be a complete discussion, and we'll come back to it at a later time when we actually start creating our own classes. So I just want to make note of it so that you understand a little bit about what's going on when we invoke methods for different classes or different objects that we use. And so I put together a few slides, and you can see here that we can define an array as a container object of fixed length that holds values of data for a particular type. And if we break this down a little bit, what we're saying is an array has a length, which we specify when we create it. It has a type, which we specify when we create it. We're assigning it a name, just like we do any other variables that we create. Each item or value that we store in an array is referred to as an element. And finally, we use the a new keyword to instantiate a new array object in memory. And all this means is it's a fancy way of saying we are creating a new instance of a particular object in memory. For example, in this case, we're creating an integer type array. So a way we might declare it in this example, we are creating a type int array specified by these two brackets. We're naming it my array and then we're going to instantiate it to um, an initialized value of length 10. So we can store up to 10 elements inside of this array. Now, one thing just to take note of, if you see these brackets existing after a named variable, that also means essentially the same thing as far as I can tell, and it just comes down to personal preference. So you can either put the brackets right after the type or right after the uh, variable name that you give it. So once we execute this instruction in our memory in our computer we end up with this array um, structure which has 10 different elements and we have an index value for each one of those elements that we can use to reference whatever values are stored in there. And if you notice we use what's known as zero indexing so that the first element that exists um, at position 0 rather than 1. So rather than counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as we normally do, you're going to start counting with 0. And the end result is that if you have something of total length 10, the final index is always going to be 1 less than that total length. So to add elements to our array, we would use the variable name, my array. We're going to specify what index or what position we want to store the value at. And now we're going to assign the value 5, in this case, to my array at index 0, as you can see here. We're going to do the same thing for my array at index 1. We're going to assign the value 10. And then at my array index 2, we're going to assign the value 15. And so now let's jump over to Eclipse. And we will start a new project. So we're going to right click over in our package explorer and go to new Java project. We'll name this um, my arrays and hit enter. And again, we'll bring this down. We'll right click the source folder, go to new, go to file, and I'll just call this array counting dot Java and hit enter. Now we'll make a quick note that's uh, counting with arrays. So now we need to declare our class. So public class array counting. Open with the curly brace. And now our public um, static void main method declaration. String bracket args. And since we just discussed arrays, you might notice now that this entire time we've been putting this parameter in here for a string array that we've named with the characters args. And we're not going to get into exactly how to use this or what it does yet, 
but this is in fact a string array that we have been specifying this entire time. So to begin with, I'm going to make a simple integer array named numbers, and we're going to instantiate it and specify it to a length of 5. And now we want to put uh, a few values in it. So we're going to use the name of it, and we're going to say we want to start at our index 0 and put the value 1. And then at numbers index 1, we're going to put the value 2. And we'll keep going all the way up through the value 5. So numbers index 3 is going to equal 4 and then finally numbers at index 4 is going to be assigned to the value of 5. So now we can print these out. We can do sys.out.println and we want to print the value in each index of our array. So we're going to start at index 0. And now I'm going to just copy and paste this to save a little bit of time. And go back and just change these each time to one higher than the previous. So now if we were to run this and we go down to run as Java application it prints 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So what this is doing is saying system.outPrintLine, and this method takes this as a parameter, and it gets the value. So numbers at index 0, what's the value there? 1, and now it prints that value out. So if we keep going with that, it's going to print each of these values out, and then terminate at the end of the program. Well, this can quickly get a little bit uh, tedious and difficult, especially if we're talking about a array of length, let's say 50 or maybe 500 or maybe even a thousand or more. So we can't sit there and write a thousand statements for printing and a thousand statements for storing. So there's got to be a faster way to do it. <clears throat> and what that gets into, and if we go back to our slide here, we're going to start using what are known as flow control statements. There are <clears throat> a bunch of them, and we'll explain them a little more in detail as we get into each one. But to go over them all, we have decision-based statements, such as if-else, switch case, or the ternary operator, which is technically an operator, but I'm listing it as a statement because it can be used for decisions and it can be used for flow control. We also have looping statements in the form of a for loop, an enhanced for loop, the while loop, and the do while loop. And finally, we have branching statements, which are signified by break, continue, and return. So now, we're going to get into using the basic for loop for right now. And to do that, we can condense all of this code, and I'm just going to comment out all of this using a block comment. I'm going to rewrite this using a for loop in far fewer lines of code. So I'm going to specify an integer array called numbers, we'll call this numbers2, and we're going to set it to new integer of length 100. So now we want to store the values 1 through 100 into this array. And if we were to do that, we would have to write 100 actual statements to do it, and then 100 more just to print them out. So rather than doing that, we're going to use a for loop. To do that, we type for and parentheses. And now we need three sections or three different sets of parameters for this. So the first thing we're going to do is declare a new integer. We'll call it i, just for index. We'll initialize it to 0. Now we're going to say i is less than... 100 and now I plus plus. 
So if we break this down, what we're doing is we're declaring a new integer variable called i. We're setting it initially to 0. And this statement only runs the first time through this loop. And the loop is specified as any code that happens between these two braces here. So now we're going to evaluate this expression. And i is 0. And it is, in fact, less than 100. So it's OK to continue running. And then we're going to run i++. So what we want to do now is take numbers 2, which is the name of our array. We want to specify an index. In this case, we're going to use i, which starts at 0. So we're going to start at our first index value. And we're going to store whatever i is, add 1 to it. Now, notice that we are storing the result of this into here. We're not actually adding 1 to i and storing it in i. We're storing it in our array at that index. And so the first time through, we have i equals 0. It's less than 100, so it's OK to run this. So at index 0, store the value 0 plus 1, which is 1. When we get here, we're going to do the increment. So 0, now we're going to add 1. i is now 1. It's still less than 100, so we can execute this statement. Now at i index 1, in this case, we're going to add 1 plus 1, which is 2. We get here, we run this i++. Plus plus. So now 1, add 1 to 1, we have 2, which is still less than 100. So we run this um, statement which says, at index 2, store the value 2 plus 1, which is 3. We get here, we add 1 again. So 2 plus 1 is now 3. 3 is still less than 100. And we keep repeating that all the way until we get to 99. Now, 99, this still evaluates to true. So at index 99, we're going to take 99 plus 1, which is 100. We're going to get here. We're going to do our i plus plus. So now i was 99, we add 1 to it, it's 100. Is 100 less than 100? It's not. It's actually equal to it. So don't execute this statement. Go to the end of this brace and now execute the next instruction. So in this case, we want to print out all the values that are in here. And to do this, I'm actually going to print it out in reverse, so from 100 down to 0. And to do this, I'm going to do a separate for loop. I'm going to go int i. In this case, I want to set it to um, 100. I'm sorry, I'll set this to 99. Now I want uh, i is greater than or equal to 0 i minus minus. And so now I'm going to do system.out.println, and I want to print the value of numbers to array at the specified index value. And I forgot an s. So again, what this is doing is we're specifying an integer variable, i, starting at 99. As long as this evaluates to true, so as long as 99 is greater than or equal to 0, we're going to execute this statement. When we get here, we're going to subtract 1 from it. So the next time through, it's 98. That's still true. We're going to print whatever was at index 98. Get here, subtract 1, 97. Keep going. When we get to 1, we're going to print out the index at 1. Subtract 1. 0 is greater than or equal to 0. That is still true. So now we're going to print out whatever value is stored inside of the index at 0. We get here. We subtract 1 from 0. Now we're at negative 1. Is negative 1 greater than or equal to 0? It's not. So now we're done. And we can print we are done. 
Now I'm going to hit Control S to save this. I'm going to right click here and I'm going to run this as a Java application. So if we go up, we can see that we have printed starting from 100 all the way down to 1. And in doing this, we have actually in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and I'm actually stretching that, we have done all of this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. In less statements than we had above, we've actually taken care of <clears throat> 200 uh, stores and retrievals by using uh, for loops. So, as you can see, this definitely saves us some time and it's a lot more efficient for us to use these. So now I'm going to save that and I think I'll just keep this as a short tutorial and we'll pick up from here the uh, next video.